Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to discover an amazing cheese from Savoie region in France. It is Roblochon de Savoie. So Roblochon is a cheese made with raw, full cream cow's milk and with uncooked pressed dough or paste. There are actually two types of Roblochon, uh, le fermier or farmer and the laitier or dairy. The first one, Roblochon Fermier, is elaborated with the milk of the same herd and the same farm. It has on top of the rind a green chip sticker to recognize it. While the Roblochon Laitier is elaborated with milk from fruitières or fructeries. So it has different herd origins. So the production of the Roblochon is in the Haute Savoie region and in the Val d'Arly in Savoie region in northeast France. So what are the origins of Roblochon? The Roblochon was born in the 18th century. It was actually a trick of the farmers of Tone Valley. At this time, the rental fee of the land was based on the quantity of milk produced. Therefore, the farmers at this time would do an incomplete milking in order for the landowners to reduce this fee. Uh, when the owner will go away, they will do what we call in French Roblocher, uh, which means milking again, and will elaborate with the second milking, the Roblochon cheese. So definitely this term gave the name to the cheese. At this time, it was only made in farms, but at the end of the 19th century, its production extended to dairies and fructeries. The cheese was granted the AOP, or Appellation d'Origine Protégée, Protected Appellation of Origin, since 1958. So how is Roblochon made? So first of all, the milking, which is very important part, because the cow must be from the region of production, uh, where they can feed on great quality food which must be natural, therefore grass during summer, and hay during winter. Uh, the alimentation can also be complemented with grain that are non-GMO. And this great alimentation of the cow is translated into the great taste of the cheese. Only three cattle breeds are allowed, which are Abondance, Montbéliard and Tarine. After the milking, a pressure is added. Uh, the temperature cannot exceed 37 degrees Celsius at any time. The milk will then curd. The milk curd is then cut into small pieces the size of a grain. In dairy production, this can be done with a machine, but for farmer Roblochon, it is done by hand. The curd grains are then put into molds where the cheese starts getting its final shape. The molds are covered with a linen or cotton fabric in order to make the draining homogeneous and to prepare for the rind. The chip is then added on top of the rind. The chip is basically green for farmer and red for dairy Roblochon. It is eatable, that is, it is made of casein. It bears the number of the place of production and a plot number two. The paste is then pressed with weights for several hours. This will help to drain completely the cheese and remove le petit lait, the small milk. The cheeses are then unmolded and dipped into a brine for one to two hours before being placed into a cheese dryer. And those are basically drying racks where the cheese will stay for a week. They are turned upside down every day and the rind is washed, which will give this final orangey uh, yellow color. Finally, the cheese go for their affinage or refining. And this happens in a cellar. The paste and the rind will develop their aromas and flavors, becoming more unctuous and smooth. It will refine for a minimum of 18 days and can do up to 40 days for the farmer Roblochon. So what is the testing profile of Roblochon? Let's see that right now. So the Roblochon appears to be a flat cylinder uh, of uh, 13 to 14 centimeters and 3.5 centimeters thick. Uh, the weight is in between 450 to 550 grams. But there is also a petit Roblochon, uh, which is the case of this one. So the rind is thin and the color is a little yellowish orangey as we mentioned. It is covered with a very thin white mousse or foam. The paste itself is very smooth and soft, and it looks already creamy. Let's smell it. So we have the smell of a bit of animal, okay, uh, like the impression uh, where we are a bit next to the cow, uh, but also this very uh, fresh cream smell that comes out, and a bit of nutty smell. Let's try it.
Mm. Well, the taste is um, similar to fresh cream with some nutty flavors. Definitely there's a bit of hazelnut. It is a little bit pungent now, but as it ages, it will become more pungent. The farmer, Roblochon, tends to have a more animal taste and more pungent also. So what to pair with Roblochon? So definitely a wine from the same region, a vin de Savoie, white, that are dry and lively, uh, can be a good pairing. Also red wine from the same region, uh, vin de Savoie rouge, which have a bit more pronounced personality and also more tannic. Wines from other regions, uh, such as from Bordeaux, uh, a red from uh, Grave or Saint-Emilion can also be a great pairing. So what are the other use of uh, Roblochon? In cooking, Roblochon is a great cheese, especially for the recipe which is very famous uh, from the region, the tartiflette. So tartiflette is a very generous dish uh, that usually people like to consume during uh, winter because it is cold, especially in Savoie. Uh, so basically, how to make a tartiflette? Uh, you have layers that you will bake of uh, sliced potatoes. Uh, you have bacon on top or lardon, we call it in France. Some onions, a bit of white wine, preferably from the same region and a hit of uh, fresh cream too. Then on top of all of this, you will slice your roblochon into uh, the length and place the two uh, pieces of roblochon on top and you will bake it. Uh, you can add some peppers and nutmeg to give a little bit more of taste. And it's definitely a recipe that I recommend you to do. It is very delicious. So thank you for watching this video about roblochon. Uh, we hope you liked it and see you next time for another one. Cheers! Thank you for watching this episode and don't forget to subscribe, like and share.